Hi everyone, I'm Diane and welcome to my studio. Today we're going to paint an adorable Easter bunny, so let's get started. Now I have my sheet of watercolour paper here, which is just um, an ordinary £140 uh, paper suitable for painting with watercolours on and I'm going to start now by sketching the rabbit and getting an idea of what my composition is going to be. If you're not too confident about your drawing then please go to dianeanton.com and you'll be able to download the outline of the rabbit there so that you can trace it onto your paper. Now I'm starting the rabbit off with uh, burnt umber and I'm just mixing small amounts of a fairly thin wash with my brush in my little uh, china palette there. And I'm just going to be basically painting wet on dry for, for this little painting. And I'm just putting in now the first layer of wash. I'd just like to mention uh, here while I'm doing this, I'm just using an ordinary synthetic nylon round brush about a size 7 here for this particular part of the painting and I'm going to also use a slightly larger one, a size 10 later on and also a toothbrush but that's all I'm going to use for this painting. Now while I wait for the first wash to dry, I'm going to start with the flowers that I'm going to surround the bunny rabbit with. And here I'm just starting one of the daffodils. The centre I'm going to paint with quinacridone gold, so I'm just dropping that in uh, initially. And then I'm going to pick up some lemon yellow or some cadmium yellow on my brush and uh, paint in the trumpet and the petals and allow the quinacridone gold to just blend into the yellow so that it looks more natural. I will list all the colours I've used in the description below the video. So if you're using a, an iPad or a phone, you'll see a little downward pointing arrow just in the corner of the video. And if you click on there, you'll be able to see lots of information which is otherwise hidden. Uh, to do with the painting and um, other things that are available and links to different sites and places. So do give that a, a quick look. And now I've mixed up a little bit of sap green, uh, perhaps with a touch of yellow included, and I'm just drawing in some very stylized stems and leaves for the daffodils. Just simple strokes. Just start off with the pointy end of the brush Increase the pressure as you go down and then release it as you get to the point where you want to stop and you should be good to go as far as the leaf goes. And now I've mixed a little bit of quinacridone gold with the sap green here for the grass underneath the bunny rabbit and I'm just uh, dropping that in loosely. Varying my mixes of greens as I go along just to give some variety. A little bit more green or a little bit more yellow 
And now I'm painting the butterfly. I've got some turquoise blue here and I'm just dropping that in roughly to indicate the wings. And uh, then I will come in with some black and just sketch in a little body there for the butterfly. And then once that's dry, I'll add a few more details to the wings, but it doesn't need a great deal of detail, to be honest. And now I'm painting the eye of the rabbit. I'm using a very, very dark brown um, that would be sepia, perhaps with a touch of black. And I'm just making sure I leave the highlight in the eye. Probably the most important thing is the position of the eye in the head of the rabbit. They, they don't look right if you get that wrong. It needs to be quite high up. Don't be put off if it doesn't look quite right the first time. And now the, uh, the fur of the rabbit is dry, so I'm just coming in now with some darker brown, same colour but just a bit thicker, and just starting to indicate some shading behind his paws and under his jawline and so on. Now I've just sped this piece of video up a little bit so that you can watch it um, a bit more quickly um, because this process is actually fairly slow and I think it might be easier to concentrate on if you, if you can see it a little bit faster. Um, but I won't be doing this to all the videos um, and I won't be doing it to the whole of this one. I'll be reverting back to regular speed in a minute. Um, just a quick mention while you're watching this, um, if you haven't already subscribed, I'd be very grateful if you would subscribe to the channel and perhaps press the bell so that you get notified when new videos come up. Um, that would be very helpful to us as we try to grow this new channel. I'm the new girl on the block and I need all the help I can get. So thank you for that. So now I'm just drawing some more flowers down here in the front. make it pretty. Still using the same sap green with a little touch of quinacridone uh, gold to soften it up a little bit. I tend to find it's best to stick to a very limited palette whenever you're doing a painting like this. It just makes it look more harmonious. And I want to just uh, reinforce the grass underneath the rabbit a little bit so I'm coming in with a slightly darker version of the same colour, again sap green there, which when it's on top of the lighter wash underneath gives a variety of shades and tones which can look quite attractive and is fairly simple to do. And now I'm coming back to have another look at the eye just to fill in the details there using a, a smaller brush here actually just for this particular uh, step I'm using a, a zero, very tiny, but you can manage with a bigger brush if you haven't got a tiny one as long as you just have a good point on it. and just touching up the shape of his nose as well, just a tiny bit. And to give the inside of the rabbit's ears a little pinkness, I'm using Potter's Pink, which is a new colour in my palette and is turning out to be quite handy. It's a good subtle way of um, coming up with a, a, a soft pink, which is really useful in nature paintings and it's a new paint for me, I haven't used it before, but it is beginning to be quite popular. So I recommend you might want to add that to your palette along with Naples Yellow if, um, if you don't have those two colours because they are very handy. And I'm using my Faber-Castell fine liner here to come in and just add some details to the, to the butterfly. I'm just edging around the wings there a little bit, very lightly, adding a few dots and the antennae and the legs of the butterfly. It doesn't need too much, you don't want to overwork it, but I do want to add little um, blue tips to the wings because I think that looks quite pretty. So I'm going to drop in a little bit of darker blue at the, at the tips of the wings there. That's I think that's probably cobalt, or probably actually no, it's more likely I think I was using ultramarine there. But um, any blue will do and underneath the base colour there is a turquoise blue um, from Shev uh, Sheveningen Turquoise, I think it's called, from Old Holland. Again, I will put um, these paint colours in the links in the description below. Should you wish to purchase something from Amazon, that would be great if you follow my links there, their affiliate links. It doesn't cost you any more to use them, but it takes you straight into Amazon 
um, if you click on one of those links and you can purchase whatever you want, whatever you want to buy, and that will always give me a very small, but you know, it all adds up. It uh, pays for the dog food and so on. No, I'm just kidding. Um, obviously it helps uh, a little bit of uh, cash coming in from Amazon to uh, keep the channel going, so I appreciate that. If you, uh, if you want to try and support the channel a little bit, that would be great, so thank you. You may have noticed sporadic rain in the background as I've been doing this voiceover here. I apologise for that, I hope it's not interfering with your pleasure. There's not much I can do about it because I paint in my studio which has a metal roof and we have been having absolutely horrible weather the last few days and so it just, I, it wasn't raining a minute ago and now it's pouring and it keeps starting and stopping and stopping and starting so you can't get away from it. Now the wind's blowing and it's disgusting out there. I'm just watching a bumblebee out of the studio window here and wondering if it's going to survive being buffeted around by this disgusting weather. Oh dear. Anyhow, back to the painting. I'm just adding some flowers using the simple method that you've seen me use before, um, where I drop in a few um, dots of strong colour into the centre of the flower and then using a clean slightly damp brush, draw the paint out to form the petals. And it's a quick and easy way of making a, a flower for a painting like this. Um, give it a try. It's uh, really fun actually to watch the paint run outwards. And then um, I add usually a bit more of the same colour or something similar to the centre, which then bleeds out also into the petals and, and gives a, a flowery effect. That's quite nice. So coming back in again with the sap green, drawing in a thin line to indicate the stem of the flower, and then using the same simple one stroke method of drawing in the leaves um, of this particular daisy-like flower. And obviously you can do whatever flowers you like. You could do pansies or you could do more daffodils or primroses, always look really nice. Whatever you prefer, I've just made these ones up. And now I'm going to grab my dry liner and um, put in the whiskers of the rabbit and uh, just put some of those on both sides and some, um, I sp I'm not sure if they're eyebrows or eyelashes, anyway, whiskers for his eyes as well. You really do need a pen like this to do those kinds of details. It's almost impossible to do it with paint and probably looks better if it's done with a fine liner. So now I decided I'd put another daffodil here and I'm going to have the bunny rabbit holding the daffodil, which I thought would look rather cute. So I'm just painting this daffodil in the same way I did the others. And then I'm going to um, put the stem, draw the stem in between his little paws there. Again using sap green and my size 7 round brush just to draw that in very simply. I'm not going to go into any details. Um, this isn't that kind of painting. And then the, the leaf in the same way I did the other daffodil leaves, just a single stroke and then another stroke to just to give it a little bit more of a rounded shape. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of green spatter here at the base of the flowers, which I'll then soften with my brush just to give a slightly more uh, natural and variegated effect. You could easily leave that out though if you prefer not to have the spatter. And now I'm going to indicate just a tiny little bit of sky here. So I'm wetting the paper with clean water initially. And then I'm going to come in with a very, very light dilute um, blue wash. This could be uh, ultramarine or cobalt blue whatever you choose and I'm just spraying it with a toothbrush just lightly and then I'm going to soften that with my large round brush. I'm not trying to fill all the gaps in the white, I'm just going to give just a little indication of um, the fact that there is a, a nice blue sky behind him without, without the sky dominating the picture. 
which could easily happen in a painting like this because it's very delicate and, and yet we don't necessarily want a completely blank white background so this is kind of compromise. And with that I think I'll call the rabbit done. I suppose he looks a little bit like Benjamin Bunny so perhaps we should call him Benji. And I hope you enjoyed watching me paint Benji for Easter and I hope you give him a go. I think he would make a lovely gift for a child this Easter along with an Easter egg. And don't forget to give me a like and to subscribe if you haven't already. We've got lots more Easter themed um, paintings coming up in the next couple of days and weeks before Easter itself. So going to be lots of things for you to enjoy having a go at. So I'll say goodbye for now. It's stopped raining and the sun's come out finally and it's time for lunch. So I wish you a happy afternoon and I'll say goodbye for now. Bye bye for now. Bye bye.